Hello and welcome to today's video. Today I want to talk to you about the connection between mood and gut health and how having poor gut health can be the, the, the thing that's sabotaging your, your positive mental space. So how do you know if this is for you? If you have any kind of mental health problem, and it doesn't, this doesn't have to be like a formally diagnosed problem, this can be like you just have negative thoughts more than you think you should, or you have anxiety, or you ruminate on things, or you've been really happy in your life, and then since you've developed gut or digestive problems, you find that it's harder for you to be positive, or it's hard for you to, to see the sort of like the light at the end of the tunnel. It just feels like being positive takes so much effort whereas in the past it was quite a a natural organic thing if that sounds like you then you really need to listen to this video because i'm going to help you understand what is happening here and when you really understand a problem the solutions present themselves and you'll be able to figure out what you can do to change this situation so as always just need to do a very very brief very quick mic check so this will take me probably four seconds you can time me done so probably not even four seconds very very quick so how your how your gut is affecting your mental health and potentially how poor gut health is ruining your your mental health your your, your positive mental state so the first place we want to look here is leaky gut you've probably heard leaky gut before i i feel like the the phrase leaky gut kind of gets it kind of i feel like it loses credibility a little bit because it doesn't sound very scientific but the thing is, this is more of a layman's term. So if you looked at it through a scientific lens, the correct term is actually gastrointestinal hyperpermeability. And when you hear it said like that, you think, oh, well, that sounds like a real medical condition. You know, this is a real thing. This is this is real. This is science. You can you can go and look on Google scholarly articles. You can go and look on you can go and look on the Internet and you'll find that this is like in the next 10 years when this science that we're studying now is accepted by the mainstream. There's going to be so much more focus on the gut, even in even in mainstream medicine. Gut is so important. It's like its own separate organ, just as important as all of your other organs in your body, maybe even more important because it feeds and nourishes all of them. So why is it important that we understand what leaky gut is and, and how, it, how it affects us? So it, what's really important to understand here is your gut is one cell lining thick. So you can think of all of the food and all of the bacteria, all of the like all of the poop, you know, because eventually at some point in your in your gut, the food that you eat is poo. Like that's that's just how it is, you know. And you've got one cell lining thick that separates what's in your gut and what's in the rest of your body. Like what's in your blood circulation, what's actually happening inside the rest of your body. It's one it's one cell thick. This whole lining all the way through your digestive system, one cell thick. So if this if these cells are there's gaps in these cells so if there's like more space between them than there's supposed to be then the things that are in your gut they're going to leak through and they're going to enter your bloodstream and th this is never supposed to happen like this is really really bad when this happens acutely like if this happens occasionally and this does this does happen occasionally to even the healthiest of people so one example would be if you take marathon runners and you measure their intestinal permeability before and after running a marathon before they have really strong integrity so they have very low levels of leaky gut but after they run their marathon they have the same levels of intestinal permeability they have the same levels of leaky gut as an individual with crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis so we're talking like bloody bloody stools you know really really a lot of inflammation going on in the gut and this is just one example but it really does help to paint a picture that your permeability fluctuates it's not set in stone even a healthy person has lower lower levels of of integrity when they have done something that's acutely very stressful so what's really a problem here is when you have chronic stress and this this membrane in your gut is chronically permeable this is where you're going to really run into problems and this is where it's really going to affect you even for this healthy person say that has that, that runs this marathon i guarantee you the day after they run that marathon they feel really crap and it affects their mental health and this is because they've got systemic inflammation going on when your gut is leaking like this it creates a lot of inflammation and your body has to produce a lot of things to mitigate this inflammation so it will raise cholesterol it will raise your stress hormones so if you've got like adrenal fatigue or you've got 
dyslipidemia or imbalances in your your blood lipids like you have to look at your gut first your gut is going to be the thing that impacts how your stress hormone balance is working so like adrenal fatigue chronic fatigue um thyroid problems you have to look at your gut first um but also uh, any kind of inflammation and the the inflammatory response so if you've got high blood markers of inflammation so if you've got like high crp or you've got like high high levels of blood of, of cholesterol especially the like the, ba the bad one it, that's that's a misnomer there is no bad cholesterol but on the test and what you've probably been told if you've got higher bad cholesterol that's a really strong indicator that you've got excess inflammation occurring in your body and it probably could be coming from your gut so now i want to help you understand how does this actually affect your mood so these molecules that are supposed to stay in your gut they're never they're never really supposed to be entering your bloodstream when they do this is really dangerous your body sees this as like a level 10 threat this is like this is like a life or death kind of situation and your body responds accordingly so it will activate the immune system it will trigger the mast cells it will turn on a lot of your immune functions that usually don't need to be on and your body will attack these molecules in your bloodstream as if they're like a pathogen or a threat or an invader and because they actually are they're, they're not supposed to be there they really are like an invader and what's really what's really bad is when you're having this happen on a chronic basis it kind of entrains the immune system to mount a very strong immune reaction and when this happens first of all your your immune system is expensive it's li it's literally one of the most expensive systems in your body so think about the functions of your immune system you've got it fighting infection you've got toxin removal you've got like the ability to generate a fever you've got the ability to activate mast cells and produce histamine you've got a whole bunch of different mechanisms involved in your immune system and it's very very expensive like we're talking if you if you have even a mild calorie deficit one of the first systems that goes off like that is your immune system and obviously when your gut isn't working properly you're not going to be nourishing yourself as well so it's it's a double-edged sword here but both edges are cutting you both edges hurt you they, they stop you from replenishing yourself but also they waste a lot of your resources because your immune system is constantly active but it's not supposed to be active activated in this way your immune system is supposed to be able to identify a threat and eliminate it and like get rid of it but when it's having this chronic exposure from this increased gut permeability it's just active all the time and it drains your system it uses up a lot of resources and it creates so much inflammation uh, in this process inflammation in your body will affect your mood anytime you have an infection anytime you have a cold or a flu anytime you have anything that creates inflammation in your body it is an intelligent adaptive response for your body to make you feel depressed to make you feel depression or to make you want to become introverted and hide yourself away from the world this is a, a this is a mechanism that we've developed because if we were in tribes and you were to sort of show symptoms of not being strong or not being able to pull your weight in the tribe you would be considered like a liability and you would not want people to be able to see you as a liability because that's what causes you to be outcast so survival mechanism this causes you to kind of recluse to want to avoid contact to want to not really be involved with people to become introverted and to in a way hide yourself away so your body can then have that time away from other people to be in this vulnerable state and to, to fix itself and to heal itself and acutely it would do this really really well so think about a dog when it gets ill you know it will go and fast it will curl up under a little tree and it will just go and lay there and it will just not do anything and we kind of want to do the same thing but when this is happening chronically you can't stay chronically isolate isolated because you need to interact with society to survive so you just then become a functioning a, a functioning depressive or somebody with depression that's just functioning in in society and that sucks and there there are also other other mechanisms so there's a there's a strong connection between the gut and different types of mental health problems that require sort of like psychiatric medications so you're looking at um, schizophrenia you're looking at uh, bipolar or you're looking at, at like disassociative disorders there's a really really strong connection and this can be because when the food isn't being digested correctly and it's leaking through the immune system then attacks these molecules but some of these molecules can look like cells inside your body this is a phenomenon you can go and google it you can research it's called molecular mimicry so this is you've got a molecule inside your body and th this looks different for everybody and it's different based on genetics and it's different based on your microbiome and it's different based on your diet and there's a lot of different this is why 
even though a lot of people are dealing with leaky gut, they have different symptoms. They have different problems. Like your mental health might be fantastic and that's great. But some people, it, it gives them an autoimmune disease. For some people, it gives them depression. For some people, it gives different issues. And this is because whatever it is that's leaking through the gut, affects you differently based on what it is that's leaking through and how your genetics determine what what your body does with it. So across the board, you're going to have an inflammatory response, regardless of what is, what is leaking through and regardless of what your genetics are, your body will trigger an immune response. And this can cause this can cause depression, this can cause anxiety. If you've got toxins that are circulating in your blood, and your liver doesn't have the ability to filter them out. So your your liver has this much space, it can filter this many toxins, but it's being exposed to this many, this, this debt that can't be paid, this is circulating around in your body and it's it's reaching your your brain, it's going into your brain and this can cause panic, this can cause anxiety, this can cause disassociation, this can cause mania, this can cause so many different things because th this isn't supposed to happen. You're never supposed to have these molecules floating around inside your brain. It's not supposed to happen. And you can imagine they're floating around in there, the body sees them and then it's triggering an immune reaction. Now you have an immune reaction happening in your brain. Like, can you imagine how much inflammation that's going to cause. Can you imagine how that's going to affect your ability to process your senses? So it's going to cause tinnitus. It's going to cause eye floaters or like a redu reduction in your ability to, to to see. Like your eye quality will come down. Like you won't be able to see as well. It affects your ability to hear people. You know, like do you ever hear somebody say something and then you kind of hear it, but you don't know what they actually said. Like you just heard it as a noise, not actually as like words. Like, this is your brain. It's, like, jumbled up. There's stuff in here that's stopping the the, the, the audio input or the, the, the sensory input from being turned into meaning. And this is, th this can be caused by this inflammation that's happening in the brain because you know, these things are never supposed to be there. So this is one huge mechanism that it can affect your mental health. Another really big mechanism is this is causing inflammation in your body and your body is trying to put this inflammation out. So it's like your house is on fire. So it deploys the fire department. And this is like your steroid and your stress hormones. So this is like your 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 cortisol. Your cortisol goes really, really high because it's an antioxidant because it helps your body to calm inflammation down. It helps it to rebuild this, this damage that's been done. Cholesterol rises because cholesterol is your precursor to your stress hormones. So you make cortisol out of cholesterol, but you also use it in cellular repair. You use it as an antioxidant. Anywhere you have inflammation, you want cholesterol because it helps to put the inflammation out and helps to rebuild the damage that's been done. And you know what happens if the damage isn't rebuilt? You die. Like that's that's what it looks like. So this is adaptive. This is your body trying to adapt and 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 help it um, cope and manage and uh, undo the damage that's been done by this by by this inflammation. But this can cause adrenal fatigue. This can drain your body if your body is working constantly on a level ten to try and quench this this inflammation, eventually your adrenal glands, they just run out of juice. They just run out of energy. They can't keep up anymore. And when this happens, you will begin to experience deficiencies of stress hormones. And this affects your mood significantly. How do you know if this is you? This is you if, especially when you wake up in the morning, you feel really, really low. Your mood is really low. You feel really unmotivated and it's really hard to get started. You don't just wake up with that zest for life, like, let's go, like, let's let's get it, let's let's live, let's let's face everything. You just kind of want to stay in bed. Or, but also, at the same time, you probably can't sleep, you know? This is a really good indicator that you are producing a, a huge amount of stress hormones in the morning, but it's still not enough. It's not enough to give your body what it needs. And this, this, is, this is basically caused by a chronic stress, a chronic inflammatory condition that, that's happening. This is also kind of characterized by that kind of energy spike later in the day, maybe between 3 p.m., even as far up to as late as like 8 or 9 p.m., sort of just as you would want to be going to bed. So that will severely impact your mood, especially in the morning. And the final thing, and this is the one that most people already know, a lot of your neurotransmitters come from your gut. So like your serotonin, your dopamine, and a lot of the precursors to other um, neurotransmitters, they come from your gut. So if your gut isn't producing these things, if you don't have the correct microbes, the correct species to be producing these things, you're just not going to produce them. And if you don't have enough in your gut, you're not going to have enough in your brain because of these neurotransmitters, often you have way more in your gut than you do in your brain. Like serotonin, for example, you've got 80 to 90% of the serotonin that's in your body is actually in your gut, not in your brain. So if you've got deficiency down here, 
you're going to have a deficiency up here. And if you don't have enough serotonin up here, you don't feel good. You don't feel positive. You, you don't really enjoy your life. It's, it's, it's really tough. So you've got this huge gut mood connection. Your gut can be influencing your health in a, in a strongly negative or a strongly positive way. And if you do have any mental health situation or if you do struggle with mood in any way, if you go to a doctor about this, they will likely just prescribe you with a medication or encourage you to go to therapy. I'm not saying don't do these things, but I'm saying it really is worth taking a look at your gut as well because it's really underrated and it's really, really important. If you, Hopefully this video has helped you see a little bit more about how this actually happens and, 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 and how this works. And this is really something that's worth investigating because I found that not a single thing has affected my mental health as much as what is happening in my gut. And this fluctuates day to day to day. The, based on the decisions that you make in your life, they're going to influence what your level of permeability is on a daily basis. And it, and it changes day to day. And this will influence your mood day to day. I hope you found this really helpful. I hope you found this informative. If you have any questions, please do let me know. And if you want solutions, I'd encourage you to go on YouTube and check out our gut health playlist. So you have a playlist of over 40 videos looking at different gut health topics. It's far more comprehensive. It's going to help you figure out where you're stuck and what you need to do more than I could pack up in, in this video because everyone's gut health situation is differently. So I would really encourage you to check out the the gut health playlist on YouTube. So you can just go on YouTube, search my name, William Dickinson, gut health. It will pop the playlist straight up and you can just give that a watch. There's so much stuff in there. You don't have to watch it all. Just browse through what seems relevant to you, what symptoms you have, and it will give you a, a really nice uh, starting point for improving your gut health and therefore improving your mood. Hope you found it really helpful. If you have any questions, let me know and take care. Bye.